And when it comes to moms, it's one of the hottest ongoing debates, working moms versus the non-working moms. And I think you know where I stand on this one, but let's see what the latest study had to say. In the debate over working mums and stay-at-home mums, choice C wins. A new study out of Australia found that part-time mums were more likely to have healthier children than working or stay-at-home mums. The study found that children of part-time mums snack less, watch less TV, and were more active. Okay, audience, now let's see what you think. Does being a working mom affect your kids? So, audience, grab your Paget gadgets, press 1 for positively, two for negatively, or three for not at all. All right, let's see what you voted. Whoa, kind of neck and neck. Mm -hmm. Wow. Well, moms and non, working moms and non-working moms, no more guilt. Nobody has to feel guilty. They have done a study that has shown that you don't have to feel guilty about it anymore because whether you're a working mom or a non-working mother, it does not matter as long as you care for your child yeah. and you show quality attention. It's not quantity. So moms, hey, can no more guilt. Can we maybe change the term, though, non-working moms? I like to call them stay-at-home moms because they work really, really they hard. They do. Absolutely. Absolutely. As a matter of fact, yeah. I've been a stay-at-home dad for a while, and that's, I think staying home is a harder job. But I'm really glad about this, Teddy, because a lot of moms that so do... So much guilt. Have to, that they have to work, they feel a lot of guilt, and they mm -hmm. really think they're doing a child a disservice. And but I think this study really looked like that when they do get home from work, they spend better it's quality about time. time. It's about quality and, time. And I still personally, I'm still glad my mom was there when I would get home from school. And my school was, I would get actually walk home for lunch because it was so close. I would have mm -hmm. lunch with my mom. I'm glad I had that. I'm glad she worked at, outside in the right. home. And my mom but, worked, yeah. and she worked a lot. And I'm also a working mother mm -hmm. with Daniel, and I and, took yeah. him to my job with me. And, you know, we both mm -hmm. became very independent people. So, well, I mean, I think it's, it's that quality time yeah. that you spend with your kids, yeah. and that's what that study shows. But in this study, didn't they, didn't they say, though, that you don't want to go back to work or go to work too really, soon? Yeah. That, right. that for that those was... kids less than one year mm -hmm. old, that, was that, the... that it's better to have your mom around. Right, that was the one they showed some positive aspects of moms going back to work and then some negatives, and it was the negative aspects were found when they went to back to work before the child was one year old. And whether that right, was... But they weren't that... It was kind of mm -hmm. negligible, yeah. though. Yeah, it wasn't... Still balanced out. Yeah, the bottom line... we got line. someone on the phone who's going to help us weigh in on this Good. issue. Please sure welcome is. back to the show via phone, internationally renowned educational psychologist as well as award-winning author. Her recent book is The Big Book of Parenting Solutions, Dr. Michelle Borba. Good morning. Hi. So you've heard us debating here, obviously. Yeah. What is your thought on all of this? What the research is clearly telling us is that we can alleviate the guilt. We now know 41% of moms are single moms. That means with an economic crunch, many of those moms are going to be out in the workplace. So therefore, what the research tells us that I think is most important is the takeaway. The bottom line is we do have to look for quality daycare for our kids. Here, parents, is what you're looking for, mom. Be choosy when you look for quality daycare. Use your gut feeling. Nobody knows your kids better. You're looking for somebody who's sensitive, who's nurturing, and ideally there's a smaller ratio so that there's not too many children with this caregiver so they can give your child more time. That child caregiver is down on the floor face-to-face -face with your child cooing and lullabying and singing, because the highest way to build your child's vocabulary and cognitive growth is what we know, just talking naturally to your child. And then finally, use that good old common sense notion. Look for safety issues. Make sure there's, it's a clean environment. It's a secure and safe environment. You know, those, those electric sockets are also covered in life. But Great information. Look, yeah, yeah, it really is. Totally Dr. Borba, thank you, you so very much. Oh, for welcome. Your